I've always remembered this episode while Lapis was at her happiness, but that's mainly the fact that she was hanging out with Steven th through the majority of the episode. And considering that if Peridot was in this episode, then I can guarantee you that she wouldn't contribute too much as Lapis would have paid attention on Steven a lot more than Peridot. In this episode, Greg rented a boat so that he and Steven could go out in the sea to enjoy themselves, and Steven decides to bring along Peridot despite her past with Jasper fusing into Malachite. Steven is only doing this because water is part of her nature. Granted my comment on the fact that the not treating Lapis as a girl who enjoys swimming is mostly oddly warded out, but at the same time, I really, I really only remember this episode mainly of Lapis being at her most happiness by this time of the, of the series. But when I say most happiness, this is literally the best of what she can do. Believe me when I say this, is that when Lapis is trying to adjust on what Steven and Greg are enjoying while renting a cruise while being in the middle of the ocean, I can guarantee you that she can't be able to find happiness completely because at the same time, she can't be able to move forward after what happened to her in the beginning of this season. And to tell you the truth, her relatability really showcased of how it's difficult to move forward and enjoy yourselves while relaxing when you can't be able to move forward completely. At times, it's somewhat difficult to understand what Lapis is feeling if you're not fully related to her like I am. But when you really think about it, sometimes re-watching these episodes years later is honestly the better alternative to understand that these episodes have aged well, but at the same time, other people just don't find the episode aged good when it comes to their own different perspectives. So whenever I think about this episode centering around Lapis trying to fit in with Steven and Greg, to tell you the truth, it's honestly difficult to actually find happiness. In same old world where she has no other place to sleep other than at the barn, you can really tell that she can't be able to find different alternatives, judging of how that she spent most of the season underwater protecting the earth. And then when this season came around, it's it's really indicating that if she was still underwater in the fusion of Malachite, then I can guarantee you that nothing would have changed other than she would have been a lot more worse. Maybe I could have had the consideration of this episode having a direction that I didn't understand if I watched it back in 2016, but to tell you the truth, if I did, it would probably make me understand that Lapis can't be able to be like every single other gem. And even though that back then my YouTube channel was brand new and I was still starting somewhere. I can still say for a fact that this episode alone is trying to give Lapis more meaning in differences of Peridot. And if anyone's gonna say that Peridot is like Spongebob and Lapis is like Squidward from Spongebob Squarepants, to tell you the truth, I would understand where people are coming from, but at the same time, I'm not a fan of Spongebob anymore. And believe me, even though that both shows are highly different from, from each other and there was a crossover when it comes to fan art, for me personally, I just don't understand the connection when it comes to Lapis's portrayal in this show and Peridot's portrayal. Though, maybe similar to Spongebob and Squidward, but at the same time, Squidward lives in the sea and he, and he never got fused whatsoever, not to mention that he never got traumatized. Believe me, the only time that he got traumatized was the Ink episode, but that's a different story. And to tell you the truth, when it comes to Lapis's personality, she is different in comparison to Squidward. Because as far as I'm concerned, no matter if Squidward is relatable, if it's up to me or not, the only relatability that I see involving Lapis is the fact that she can't be able to get away when she is into something that is really unhealthy. And I can, and we can all agree that Squidward doesn't have any of those qualities. Or negatives. 
Speaking on unhealthy, we get to see Jasper in the final minutes of this episode who wants to fuse with Lapis in order to form Malachite again. And to tell you the truth, I really felt like this scene was a lot more severe in comparison to my first binge watch of the episode. To tell you the truth, whenever Jasper is desperate to be in a fusion with Lapis, she just wants to be stronger and being invincible against anyone that comes in her way. And when it comes to Lapis, with her being so obsessed in the fusion with Jasper for so long, they really wanted this fusion thing to be unhealthy as possible. Like, when it came to Paul fusing with Rose, even though that it was a toxic relationship, at the same time, the fusion itself really felt like that they were close together and know each other personally. While Lapis and Jasper, on the other hand, is the total opposite. Even though I'm not going to revisit the episodes that I've talked about from my Carnivals videos that had Jasper in it, the only thing I can say is that she is mad on being invincible. And every time I always see her in this scene alone, it really feels like that she is remorseful. And it's really difficult to see her be in this position while she has the most of power in comparison to Peridot and Lapis. If Jasper did fuse with Lapis again, she would have been a lot more insane since that she was manipulating Lapis until Lapis punched her out in order to have her be her own self again. Believe me when I say this, the only thing that gave me when it came to Jasper's character from this episode is the fact that she is insane, and it really shows in the episodes Gem Hunt and Crack the Whip. And with her being more powerful, even without Lapis, really shows that she was extremely deranged. Even though that, like I said, I'm not going to revisit the episodes that I talked about in my Carnivores videos, I am still going to talk about the the remaining episodes that centered around her in this season. As far as I'm concerned, that's honestly one of the only episodes that I remember when it comes to the fusion of Steven and Amethyst, along with the fact that it will probably be the defeat of Jasper, because I don't think that she actually returns in Leo Seasons. It's mainly my knowledge that Season 3 is technically Jasper's season on being the antagonist, but at the same time, it's been a while since I watched those episodes. And the intros that I made were mainly just focusing on the clips themselves and not watching them completely. So, hopefully when I watch those episodes, it will be a chance that I might be able to see something that I that my that may jog my memory, but who knows. For this is for this episode alone, I really enjoyed it. And when it came to them destroying the rented boat, I can guarantee you that Greg doesn't have any more money left. Unless if I'm wrong, but at the same time, it's never been established on how much money that he has left. I'm giving this episode an 8.5 out of 10. You.